What's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out the JMGO 01 Ultra Short Throw Projector. So Ultra Short Throw Projectors have been becoming very big as of recently. And JMGO has now a brand new model called the O1. Let's go ahead and see what's inside the box. It's got a nice packaging actually. Little flip top here. Inside we get some documentation. Here is the accessories. Remote control. Power cord. And we have the power brick. This is a, a little guy. Dimension wise, it's about 12 inches wide by nine and a quarter inches deep by 3.8 inches high. It's fairly light, it weighs only about five pounds. This is a native 1080p projector, but it does support 4K input. So even though it'll support 4K input with HDR, it's only gonna output 1080p. On the front here, we just have the, the branding, the JMGO branding. Audio is done, handled by Dyn Audio. Anybody that knows Dyn Audio knows that Dyn Audio is pretty high end at least in the audio space. So that's pretty impressive that they teamed up with Jamgo to provide the audio. On the top here, you get your power button, which does illuminate. Here's your lens. It's said to be anywhere from 100 to 150 inches at only 10 inches away from your wall. Underneath, you get a little tripod mount on the bottom there with some rubber feet. There does not seem to be any adjustments here. Sometimes you'll get ultra short throws that have adjustable feet, but this is just rubber feet. So no adjustability there. On the back, you have your LAN input, USB in, optical output, two HDMIs, one with support for ARC, and then you get your power input as well. Some extra features that the O1 has is Alexa support. So it's got Amazon Alexa support. It's got autofocus, auto keystone. Brightness is rated at 800 ANSI lumens. Contrast ratio is 5,000 to one. And importantly, lamp life on this, since it's LED, is 45,000 hours. So that's a lot of time. This isn't like a lamp-based where you might get like 6,000 hours. 45,000 hours should last you several years. This also runs on Android, so there is 3 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of space available. So let's go ahead and get this installed in the theater, and we shall see what kind of image quality we get from this little guy. For setup, I'm going to connect this up to a Stuart Film Screen Harmony G2 projector screen. It's an all-white screen with a gain of 0 0.07. This is in my dedicated theater, so it's totally light controlled and will showcase how good this projector can look. If you wanted to use this with an ambient light rejecting screen for daytime use, you could do that as well. I've placed the projector on a stool about 11 inches from the screen, which gets me 100 inches of image size. If you want a bigger image, you'll have to pull the projector further away from the screen or from the wall. All right, so now that we got it lined up to the screen, once you turn it on, you're gonna be brought to the home page. But first, let's go and check out some of the settings. Under settings, the first option that we have are your network settings. Here is your Wi-Fi network. If you want, you can hardwire it. Personal hotspot, which you cannot use. And then Bluetooth. This is where you can connect either Bluetooth keyboard or the remote control. Next section is the source signal. You can either use the built-in apps within the projector itself as local, HDMI 1, or HDMI 2. You can turn off CEC control. Color range, we have options for 16 to 235 or 0 to 255, or automatic. For startup source, you've got local, HDMI 1 or HDMI 2 as your default once you turn on the projector. Next section we have are the audio settings. For key press sound, you can turn this on or off. The optical output delay, you've got zero or up to 25 milliseconds. Audio output, we've got the built-in speakers or we've got the ARC or optical out. You can send it as PCM, RAW, or Bypass. If you're going into something like a receiver, you might want to keep it on RAW for the best quality sound. Audio mode, we've got a few options here, which we'll check out once we start playing some content. 
Next section are the projection settings. Here is the JM Go Eye Protection. Keeping this on will allow the sensor on the front of the projector to turn off if you happen to pass in front of the laser. That way you don't accidentally blind yourself. Under brightness we've got high brightness or you've got balanced. So if you want the brightest this projector can put out, you're going to want to keep this on high brightness. Next option is the low blue light mode. You can either keep this off automatic or you can turn it on. I believe this is for some eye strain. So if you're getting some eye fatigue, you can turn this on or if you want, just keep it off. Next section is the auto keystone correction. So right now I've got this perfectly squared up with my screen, but if you turn it on, it should automatically either stay the same since it's already perfectly lined up or it'll shift the image by itself. As you can see, it does kind of skew the image over to the left just slightly. So that, uh, that seems to be a little bit off. I actually had it perfectly aligned with the screen. So maybe something is a little off with their software right now. But if you want, you can do this manually. If you go into the manual keystone correction, if you tap either left, that brings in your left side of the screen. Or if you tap to the right, that brings in the right side of the screen. Tap up, brings in the upper portion. Then if you tap down, that brings in the bottom half. Next option is intelligent image flattening. You're supposed to be able to adjust this using the JM Go Fun Control app, which as of the time of this video is not available. Digital zoom. If you have this perfectly lined up with your screen, it's going to be at 100%. If you have a smaller screen and you can't place the projector anywhere else and you just want to fit that screen onto a smaller section of your wall, then you can zoom all the way back out. Obviously, you'd want to line this up perf as perfect as you can because you don't want to cut into the 1080p resolution. So since you're digitally manipulating the picture, you're actually chopping away at that 1080p picture and you're bringing it in maybe like 50%. So you're probably at something like 480p right now. So right now that image is actually not 1080p, it's like cut in half. So of course, if you want, try to get your image as square as possible and lined up as perfectly as possible with your screen so you're not wasting pixels. Next option here is the autofocus. What I'm going to do right now is take this out of focus, make this as blurry as possible. You can do that by tapping on the controls on the side of the remote. So once we turn this on, it should autofocus by itself. And there you have it. It does a pretty decent job, but if you look at the upper right corner where it says 1223, it is slightly blurry up there. So we are going to have to manually do that on our own. So I'm just going to turn autofocus off and adjust that myself till it's nice and crisp. Next section here is the autofocus calibration, which will show you some patterns. So you can manually adjust this on your own if you'd like. Next section is the aspect ratio. You've got 16 by nine or four by three. Projection mode, you've got front, rear, ceiling front, or ceiling rear. I'm gonna go back to frontal. So if you do wanna mount this projector on your ceiling, you do have the option for that. Next section is the video section, which we'll jump into after we start playing some content. Under advanced settings, we've got fan. We can turn that on automatic or on full speed. Indicator control turns off the light on the top of the projector. Time shutdown, you have disabled or you can do user defined by as many hours or minutes as you'd like. Companion mode, you can set this for 15 minutes to an hour. So if there is no operation within the specified time frame, the device will automatically enter companion mode. And then the last section are the system settings. We've got some language options, time zone options, keyboards, firmware update, factory reset, about, and contact us. And that wraps it up for the settings. Let's go back to the homepage and look at some of the features. 
Once you're on the home page, it'll give you a list of apps here that are available to you. Or you can go to some recently viewed items, now trending videos, and some popular news. The only issue here is that if you do want to check out any of these videos, let's say Jimmy Fallon BTS Butter, once you click on that, it's going to ask if you want to play it. Once you hit play, it'll ask you to download YouTube. If you confirm that, and it does say in the bottom there that the resource could not be found. So that means that the official Google YouTube app does not actually work. If we back out of this, jump into the app section, that'll take you into all your downloaded apps here. If you do want to get YouTube to work, you can jump into the app store. This isn't the Google Play Store, by the way. This is Jamgo's app store. So once you get into the app store, you will have to download what is called the Smart YouTube app. Once you get that installed, you will be able to use YouTube on the Jamgo projector. If you've ever used the official Android TV YouTube app, this looks pretty much the same as that. If we click on a video here, it does indeed work, and you do get some options just as you would on the Android TV version. So let's back out of that and check out some other apps that we have available to us. So we've already checked out the YouTube app. Let's check out Amazon Prime. This is pretty popular. As you can see here, this is the mobile device app. So this isn't the Google TV Android app. You can still navigate through the menus using the remote control. If we go in, we can check out the image quality here. And the Amazon app does indeed work on the JM Go. Let's back on out of that. Check out the Disney Plus app. So the Disney Plus app is the same app that you would get on Android TV. And as you can see, the Disney Plus app does work properly. And last but not least, let's check out Netflix. Now, this is the mobile device version of Netflix, so this isn't the Android TV version. So you're not gonna be able to use your remote control. You will have to plug in a Bluetooth keyboard to get this to work. As you can see, the little mouse here. You can scroll using the mouse pad or the directional keys on your keyboard. And if we jump into a show, and as you can see, this is the mobile device interface, the same as you would get on your cell phone. So if you do want to watch Netflix on the Jam Go, you're going to need a Bluetooth mouse and a keyboard. Now, since this does support 4K and HDR, I did plug in a Roku Premium into the device. What we're going to do is pop in Angry Birds 2, since this is a bright, colorful movie, and check out the 4K HDR performance. As you can see in the upper right corner there, it does say 2160p UHD and it does support Dolby Audio. Now let's jump into the video settings. So under image mode, we've got user, bright colored, office, and standard. Under user, you have options for brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, and sharpness. So since we are watching a fairly colorful movie, we might want to bump up the brightness a little bit here. You can just brighten up the image here as well. Make that HDR pop a little bit. Maybe give it a little saturation. Now you've got a fairly bright, punchy image. Under noise reduction, we've got off, low, medium, and high. Low latency mode is useful if you're playing a video game. Under motion compensation, you've got off, low, medium, and then you have high. So if you do want to get that soap opera effect for the ultra smooth motion, you can jack this up all the way to high so you get that very, very smooth motion. And that works actually pretty well. For HDR, we've got automatic, or you can turn that off. If you do turn it off, then the image does look very washed out. So we're gonna keep that on automatic. You can see that's a big difference between off and automatic. Under color temperature, we've got standard, cold, and warm. 
And then for wall calibration, this function does not work, so do not use that. I am told they are working on this feature, but at the time of this video, wall color calibration doesn't work. Now keep in mind, this is a 1080p projector, but this does accept 4K UHD HDR. And as you can see, this throws out a very, fairly bright, punchy image. I mean, the black levels are very contrasty. There's good shadow detail. The highlight detail in the clouds are very nice. You can see the angry birds, the bird's fur. It's very sharp. It's not perfectly sharp. It's not 4K crisp. I mean, if you're sitting close enough, you can kind of see the pixel structure. But for a 1080p projector at this price point, it does look very good though. Now let's jump into a darker movie and see how good the black levels are. So for a darker movie like this, of course, like I said, it does a good job. But the blacks do tend to skew a little grayish. So they're not going to be perfect. But again, at this price point, this does a very commendable job. The resolution is good. The peak highlights are good. They're very bright. You do get some deep darks on here. Like again, they do skew a little bit to the gray side, but you do get some good separation within the image. Dr. Silas Jones is bending all clinical protocol. US Gov object 1982 is successfully activated. Just got done playing some PS5 games on the 01 by JM Go. I gotta be honest, the picture quality, it's like, you know, your typical gaming monitor. And the reason why I bring up gaming monitor is because it's, it feels like it's almost close to a gaming monitor. And now that's surprising because typically these projectors, especially with the ones that have 4K HDR, they don't have the best input lag. I mean, look at the Epson that we reviewed last time. It sucked. Like, ter it was terrible. Um, as much as it hurts me to say, because I like Epson as a brand. It's just that the input lag on that thing sucked. This, on the other hand, we're talking at least, now, based on my experience, at least anywhere between 18 and 22 milliseconds of delay here. Now, I would know this because on my OLED, I have 30 milliseconds in its best mode, and my gaming monitor that I play on, uh, a BenQ, um, HL2460 has about 8 milliseconds and of course everybody out there knows that if you want a nice screen with good input lag you're talking to LG OLEDs like the C1 but sometimes you want a larger screen because you're playing something like I was playing Battlefield 5 and you want to see you know the entire map you want to be able to see the enemies easier you need a larger screen and something like this ultra short throw by PM Go is going to be for you and I think it's a solid choice for gamers, for those people who just want a large screen in their house and they want to just play games and have fun. It's not going to be the best quality out there, but it certainly gets the job done when it comes to performing at a, at a pretty good level when it comes to playing games, fighting games, shooters, and even games like Rocket League. At the time of this video, the JM Go 01 is selling for $699. This particular model that I have on hand still has a few things to work out. The official YouTube app doesn't work, which makes the music and video recommendations on the home screen kind of useless. Certain apps like Amazon Prime and Netflix are only running the mobile versions, so navigating them on a big screen can feel awkward. And in the case of the Netflix app, you will have to use a wireless keyboard and mouse. Now I have been told that these apps came pre-installed for review purposes, and that they will be fully functional in the O1's final release. As for the performance, the projector has a snappy user interface, and the image quality was very good when I was using the Roku. It played back 4K HDR material without any issues, and the picture quality was bright. Keep in mind, this is a 1080p projector, so the larger you make the image, the more you will start to see the pixel structure. Though for a 1080p projector, the image was sharp with a little softening in the upper corners. So focus uniformity isn't perfect across the entire screen, but you probably won't even notice while you're watching a movie. I found black levels acceptable at this price point, but as I mentioned earlier, they will skew on the grayer side. Now, to be fair, even my $5,000 and $9,000 projectors don't have perfect blacks, so for $700 it's absolutely fine. Now, if you do want to pair this with an ambient light rejecting screen for daytime use, I didn't find the projector bright enough for this kind of situation because the image will get washed out. If you have very minimal light you can get away with it, but a totally blacked out room is going to work out the best. 
If you do want to get the most out of this projector, I'd personally pair it with an external streaming device like a Roku or an Apple TV or some other Android streaming device, because the built-in app support isn't that comprehensive. At least right now it's not. But as it stands, the O1 is a solid projector that's super easy to set up and throws a bright, punchy, sharp image. And I forgot to mention, it's pretty quiet too. Well, those are my thoughts on the JM Go O1 Ultra Short Throw Projector. If you guys are interested in picking one of these up, I'll leave a link for it in the video's description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys again in the next video.